What we are looking at on screen now is an Angular application. Inside of that Angular application, we have this canvas that is rendering a 3D scene built with Angular 3, which is a 3JS library for Angular built by Chao Tran. Now this 3D scene might not look very three-dimensional. What I have done is create a two-dimensional plane inside of this 3D scene, and since we are looking directly at the face of that plane and the camera is static, it appears as though we are just looking at a 2D image. But obviously we aren't just seeing a solid colored plane on the screen. We are seeing a bunch of lines and some of them are wiggling. In fact, I can also click on these buttons which are outside of this 3D scene entirely and just part of the normal Angular app and it will change which line is wiggling. The real trick is that I have applied a fragment shader to this plane. A shader is a little program written in GLSL, which is a C-like language for OpenGL. I am avoiding turning this video into a graphics and shader tutorial, but all you really need to know for context for now is that when we apply a fragment shader to this plane, it will run our little GLSL program for every pixel on the plane. The output of this program will be the new color that pixel should be. A fragment shader changes colors of pixels, that's about it, but the results can be absolutely incredible. This is the shader code I have to generate this violin image. It uses some math to determine where those strings should appear. If the current pixel being inspected is in a location that should be a string, the program will return the color of that string at that location. If the pixel being inspected is somewhere that should just be the background, it will just return the background color. We also pass in some inputs into this shader, which are called uniforms, so that we can change how the shader works based on which string is currently active and the current time, which is how we are able to create this sine wave animation. The colors of the pixels in certain locations are changing based on a function of the current time. The end result here is a highly performant 2D animation that we can control dynamically from within our Angular application. This is a reasonably basic example, but you can do some pretty wild stuff with just fragment shaders. Check out shadertoy.com to see what I mean. So I'm going to give you an overview of how this is actually implemented with Angular and Angular 3 now, but I'm not going to be focusing on the specifics of how Angular 3 works. For that, I will link to a great demo by Chow where he walks through building a 3D slideshow. If you are interested in me doing a deeper dive as well in another video, let me know in the comments. So you've already seen the shader code, but to actually get this loaded in Angular, we need to add a GLSL loader to our angular.json file. This defines a custom loader so that when the builder encounters an import with the GLSL file extension, it will just treat it as text. Then we just need to add some types so that these files are recognized as modules when we try to import them. Now if we look at the root component of the Angular application, you'll see I am rendering this violin component. And then if we take a look at that component, we will see we have an Angular 3 canvas set up with a camera defined that determines the section of our 3D scene that we will actually be able to see. This is called the viewing frustum. These values determine the shape of this frustum, which in a typical 3D scene would be a lot larger, but we only need to render a teeny tiny little slice for our 2D plane to be visible. These settings will create a frustum that is 2x2 two two and 0.1 units deep, and we want our plane to take up that entire space. I don't want to get too much into the weeds here, but a relevant point is that we are using an orthographic camera here instead of a more typical perspective camera. This means that our near and far values don't actually matter. It won't matter if our plane is right up close to the camera or really far away. With an orthographic camera, an object will be the same size no matter how far away it is from the camera. So to see how our plane is actually created, we can take a look at the scene graph which is attached to this canvas. It is here that we create our plane, set it to the same size as our viewing frustum, and apply the fragment shader as well as passing the inputs for the uniforms through to that shader. We supply the fragment shader with an initial set of inputs, but we can also dynamically update those as the values of our signals change by binding them using NGT value. Now obviously there is a lot of stuff going on here that I haven't talked about, so as I mentioned if you want me to do a deeper dive into the specifics of this code and using Angular 3, let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this one, if you did please feel free to leave a like or subscribe before you go, and I hope to see you back here again soon.